here's the judgment of works for Christians. Revelation 2 and 3, Jesus watches and evaluates the churches, keeping score, uh, giving grades. Uh, to Christians, Jesus says, I am he who searches hearts and minds, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. After death, all believers are said to give an account of our lives to the Lord. The Romans 14, listen to this now. We will all stand before God's judgment seat. The we... Uh, who's he writing to? The church at Rome, believers in Christ Jesus. We will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will confess to God. So then, each of us will give an account of himself to God. And this one is one of the most difficult issues we could possibly face. It's it's. It's a difficult problem, and I'll be very honest uh, with you. I've received letters from people who have said, How dare you say we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. How dare you say whether good or bad? And I'll bet you know what my response is. That's what the scripture says. I didn't say it. <laughs> God said it. Okay? So, some, I have had, I get many letters from people who will quote the Bible to me and think I wrote it. You know, as if I wrote it. And, and they'll even take biblical terminology, exact phrases. How dare you say that a believer could be held accountable for bad things they have done? Let me repeat. Not what I said. I did not write this. It had nothing to do with it. I didn't even translate it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Now, we are going to talk about what that means, but before we get into that quagmire, uh, uh, say a couple more things. The result of this judgment will be the gain or loss of eternal rewards. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 12. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, the, the foundation is what? Christ. Only, only one foundation. One foundation has been laid. That's Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation, which is Christ, using gold, silver, costly stones, and, and those are groupings, uh, like if you have a, a physical Bible, uh, then, you know, group, I, I put a parenthesis, begin parenthesis in front of gold, in parenthesis after costly stones. It groups gold, silver, costly stones. Now, second grouping. Begin parenthesis in front of wood, hay, or straw in parenthesis. Two groupings. All right. His work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. This is now where you get to fire. It will be revealed with fire. And the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. Here's where we get the clear clarification here that we're still talking about, that when we're talking about rewards, we're not talking about eternal destiny. Because otherwise, he wouldn't say he'll be saved. Because it, so, so let's go back now. If anyone builds on this foundation, well, what happens when fire, and let's, what do you think the fire represents of this passage? Okay, the Holy Spirit. What attribute of God would it represent? 
wrath, judgment, holiness, uh, the, the wrath and judgment coming out of God's holiness. So the fire, the consuming fire, our God is a consuming fire, the consuming fire of God's holiness and the judgment and wrath that are associated with that. Now, it's a wrath upon what? Wrath against what? S sin. Evil. Okay. And so when he looks at the unbeliever and there's the sin and the evil, there's no distinction between the person and what the person has done. But when he looks at the believer who has done some of the very things that people are going to be punished in hell for, uh, what does he see when he sees that person? The blood, of the blood of Christ, the righteousness of Christ. He made him to be sin for us and knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, 2 Corinthians 5.21. We are the very righteousness of Christ. We are covered. Uh, he, we are uh, sinless in the sight of God because of the atoning work of Jesus on our behalf. So that's where we often draw the conclusion. Therefore, God would never take into account the bad things we've done. I mean, that would be impossible. No. We are fully forgiven. We stand righteous before God in our persons. Otherwise, we could never go to heaven in the first place. We could never be saved. Where it says, He Himself will be saved, that could never be. If not, for the atoning work of Jesus on our behalf. But what we're left with is nonetheless something very disturbing in the same sense that 2 Corinthians 5.10 is disturbing. If it is burned up, if your works are burned up, because they weren't done to the honor of Christ, they weren't done with a heart, a motive of loving, pleasing God, wanting to help others, whatever, good motives, um, he will suffer loss. And so the huge question then becomes, how can a believer who is about to enter or is entering or has entered the presence of God where he's going to live with him in heaven for all eternity in what possible sense could any believer ever suffer loss? Now's the time to start talking. <laughs> it, yeah. Loss of reward. That's what we're talking about. But many people just, you can't suffer a lot. I mean, no, I mean, suffer. Suffer, is it purgatory? Suffer loss. Well, call it experience loss, but you know, it's, the word is, it's an adverse word. 